from something you forgot along the way. Stories of wisdom and learning. And today's story is number 32, The Lesson of the Red Camellia. One night, a man in the prime of life got up to go to the bathroom. On the way, he spat into the garden. To his horror, his bottom was bright red, a telltale sign of tuberculosis. His legs turned to jelly and he sank to the floor. When the man didn't come back to bed, his wife grew concerned and went looking for him. She laid a hand on his forehead and found he had a raging fever. The household was soon in an uproar and they sent for a doctor. Meanwhile, the man told his wife what had happened and she went out to the garden to see for herself. She discovered that he'd spat onto the fallen petal of a scarlet camellia. When she told him this, his fever magically disappeared. And the next morning, he set off for work as usual. If he hadn't found out the truth, he could have made himself truly sick. There is no need to live in fear of what may come. Change is only natural. The earth itself has day and night. The moon waxes and wanes in the sky. The ocean has its high tide and low. In our lives, too, we experience both fat and lean. When you are at a low point, just wait, for this too shall pass. When you are at rock bottom, you are undergoing a test. Think of it as Buddha's way of training you so that in time, he can give you something better than you have ever known. A hothouse flower does not smell so sweet as one exposed to wind and cold. Rain and sunshine are equally good. Anyone who cannot appreciate this is of little substance. It is essential to open the eyes of the soul. Okay, very good. This is uh, yeah, one of the most popular stories in this book. Um, because I think it's so easy to relate to what's happening in the story. We all have those experiences when suddenly we jump to a conclusion, maybe based on some physical symptom we have or something that occurs, we catastrophize things and our mind creates a living hell for us. So if we are listening to Buddhism regularly and we have been making our awareness of impermanence uh, deeper and deeper, uh, we begin to see that, yeah, change is only natural. So our mind becomes more accepting of impermanence, which is the inevitability of change. Yeah, so in this way, uh, we will be able to, uh, to, to accept. You know, some people these days talk about radical acceptance. So usually it's easy to accept, you know, <laughs> when things are good, we are, you know, quick to accept them. But when things are bad, whatever is inconvenient for us, we want to reject them. So there is no consistency in our own mind. We need to uh, be fair. And, and yeah, like, you know, there is a joke. Uh, oh, you know what? Everything is impermanent. This is the bad news. <laughs> especially if you're having a good time in life right now. Oh, that's a bad news. It's not going to last. But actually, impermanence can be a good news too when we are going through hard times. Do you see? <laughs> we want, this too shall pass. When we are going through hard times, uh, we think, oh, I have to suffer forever. But actually, that too is temporary. It's just a phase, like the phases of the moon it waxes and wanes. So it's constantly changing. 
But if we are not moving towards life's ultimate purpose, which Buddha teaches us to be uh, enlightenment or true happiness in the heart, it's going to be difficult to, um, to overcome these challenges and trials of life. People just tell me they think life is just a series of losses and sufferings, one after another, because they still don't see the ultimate goal, what it all adds up to. And another thing I love about this story is about, it says, a hothouse flower does not smell so sweet as one exposed to wind and cold. Yeah, hothouse flower is the one that is in a greenhouse. So um, they're all treated equally and they don't suffer the bitter cold of the winter. There is artificial, uh, maybe temperature is kept at a certain number. So that kind of flower is not going to smell so sweet and good as the flower which is exposed to wind and cold constantly being threatened uh, for its survival by the harsh conditions of the environment, the wind and the cold. That flower has to overcome so many hardships before it can uh, blossom. Naturally, the sweetness of its smell, fragrance, will be no comparison with a flower in a hot house. Yeah, so when you're suffering in life, that means it's giving us greater opportunity to confront who we are and have the flower of true happiness bloom in our heart. So in Buddhism, we can be grateful even in bad times, in adversities and hard times, as long as we are headed in the right direction. So good job, everyone, for being here, practicing together. Tonight, we will have our um, webinar-style talk by Yuichi at 8 p.m. Pacific time. And have a wonderful Thursday. Bye. Thank you, Bira. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, Gary.